presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you throughout the week. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. We have the ESDAB about... 1.16 points, excuse me, 1.17 percent up. The Russell of about 1.69 percent. NQs of about 1.33 percent. The YM up about one percent. And so we had gold uh, really shoot up today on significant volume. So the dollar, uh, now we're down a little bit from that kind of run up we've had. We were sitting around 107.30 till we came back down. The dollar also saw a bump up. Uh, earlier today, uh, you know, the metals, stock market, and the dollar, um, are, you know, these are inversely related with each other. But um, we see some weakening signs in the dollar, which is uh, positive for the metal market and the stock market as a whole. Copper futures kind of flat right now. Light Swede crude down a little bit. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that. It did shoot up um, over some concerns about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, that's occurring. We might see that pull back in just a little bit. The Brent crude down about the same as well. Tesla up 1.37%. We'll talk a bit about them. Uh, they're looking at some of their quarterlies after releasing the Cybertruck, and some analysts aren't entirely sold on it. Steel Dynamics, we're back in that trading range, about 105. Um, see, we really saw it break this consolidation, which usually would be a bearish kind of signal. But it did come back up and shot all the way back up to 110, and uh, we're now floating at 105. So I'm keeping my eye on this um, to kind of see what will happen. I'd like to see some more volume action, uh, rejecting really the 100 area. Uh, we might see a traversal back down to a uh, sub 100 a little while. QQQ up 1.32%, Google up 1.53%, Meta up 2.14%, Disney coming back a little bit. I say that a little bit at $85. Um, we're still down um, pretty significantly from its highs. Apple kind of sideways. iPhone 15 sales were not so good in China as they had been in editions prior. Of course, the SPY trading about 436.47. We have some news with Lulu Lemon. They're shooting up significantly, <laughs> as you can see with the volume. Up to about 420. You're trading at 418, uh, 275 right now. So they're planning on joining the S&P 500. Um, so people really want to get in on this. Uh, Vancouver Canada-based company stock was up over 10 percent at 415.55 earlier in the session. Uh, Lululemon has had a strong year despite weakness in the overall apparel industry. I remember when Nike was getting kicked pretty heavily, uh, Lululemon was. Um, pretty strong. And this has been a strong company for quite a while. Uh, the prices are uh, relatively high, uh, but the quality is very good. And uh, they're, they're just dominant in kind of the Athletica uh, industry. Its second quarter results came in better than Wall Street expectations. And then that revenue increased about 18% year over year. Late September, Lululemon said it had entered a five-year partnership uh, with the connected with the fitness platform Peloton for its content. Uh, Lululemon will become the primary athletic apparel provider for Peloton, uh, while some Peloton instructors will be Lululemon ambassadors. The company said it also uh, plans to stop selling its connected fitness mirror device, which it purchased for $500 million in June 2020 when valuations uh, for at-home fitness equipment like Peloton and Tonals were skyrocketing uh, due to everyone being inside because of COVID. Uh, Yahoo Finance executive editor uh, points out that Lululemon unsuccessfully attempted to integrate the mirror acquisition, but the 
positive thing about this is that when something doesn't work, they cut it out and the stock always tends to blow up. Um, and that, we see that happen a lot with Meta as well. When they've invested heavily in it, um, if they cut something that's failing, people just tend to love it and want their, put their money somewhere. Um, obviously, this is a pre pretty significant jump. Uh, they gapped up very high. Um, and this is on a yearly here. So, I mean, it gapped way above its yearly high of 407. Um, beginning of the year, probably trading about 28, uh, excuse me, 286 dollars and 57 cents uh, so keep your eye out on it uh, i really would not get in at this level just because you had such a stark amount of volume at the top you might see some kind of sell-off um, but uh, you know we'll be trading some new bounds here uh, with that on some crypto news uh, tether has been uh, has frozen some crypto wallets and this is like the scary thing right if you're like a crypto guy and the concept is you get this and it's kind of away from regulatory uh, bodies. Um, you can do with your money what you want and, you know, there's, there's more freedom to it. Well, we're seeing now with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, and certainly with the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine uh, that there have been some wallets that have been frozen um, that have been linked to terrorism and warfare, as it said. Give a second for this to not lag. There we go. So Tether has frozen 32 virtual wallets linked to crypto-funded terrorism and warfare in Israel and Ukraine. And what I want to say, too, all right, I say this is bad news. Like, it's not bad news, right? It's good that these companies can, like, figure out which entities are, you know, supporting violence throughout the world and freeze these, right? It's just I think what it does is it underlines, again, um, kind of the inaccuracy of thinking that cryptocurrency is going to be um, some new liberation uh, regarding finance. Um, everything's always going to kind of get back to what it was. And what I mean by that is the regulatory bodies we have now regarding money are the, you know, the result of many years of people taking advantage of certain systems or doing things incorrectly. And so new laws always get put on top and new regulations always get put on top. And we're going to see that happening um, with cryptocurrency as well. And I think these larger companies, um, obviously Tether is just the, the foundation that... Um, supports the kind of algorithm for this coin but you know you look at things um, like all the different wallets that exist in the different kind of exchanges um, both of these guys are gonna or both of these entities are gonna have to work together to kind of police um, what the people who are using their programs are doing and that's going to allow these companies to kind of exist further right you know if you're having a cryptocurrency that exists and it, it is being used for things like terrorism or kind of illicit activities and the people who are in charge of the algorithm uh, don't do anything about it, um, you're going to get governments coming for you essentially, right? And they're going to shut down your business and seize all your stuff. So this has to be kind of done uh, in, in order to maintain longevity of the program. Uh, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We have Steve Rhodes as well, which is great. If you have a question, you can talk to me in the den. If you're not in it, you should get in it tfnn.com under services we have it there or you can email me at jacob at tfnn.com we will be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien, and we have Steve Rhodes on the line. Steve, can you hear me? I can't, just fine. How you doing, Jacob? Doing well. How are you doing? It's, uh, it's about 69 degrees here on the West Coast. How about you guys? It's wintertime. Yeah, it's Absolutely. beautiful, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do like it, um, you know, certainly as opposed to, you know, playing golf in 90 degree weather. Of course. But it's a little, it's a little chilly. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Well, it's, it's welcome because uh, it was so hot last week. So. I'm glad yes. to have it back. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Steve, so, what are we looking at today? Yeah, you know, so last week um, was the uh, weekend after the uh, the beginning of the war in the Middle East. Yes. And so what what we did was we took a look at um, how prior uh, Middle East events have impacted mostly the S and P 500 because I didn't really have chart data that went back that far for gold and crude oil. But we still took a look at what we could. And it was interesting because it kind of opened your eyes up to what traders are actually doing, what's really happened, at least in the past, versus what one might think is going to do that. So what I thought we would do today is we would just take a look at crude oil and just focus on crude oil. And uh, Jacob, this is one of the charts that I showed uh, uh, last week on uh, Monday or something very similar to this. And the result of taking a look at uh, the way crude oil, gold, and the S&P 500 traded, what we had determined or what we concluded was to just trade the patterns. So, you know, what I do is I share with folks each day uh, what the different patterns that I see inside the marketplace and patterns that help us to identify where the momentum is at, whether it's to the upside or the downside, when there's a top or bottom signal that's forming. So as an example here, um, in 2006, there was a the Israel Hezbollah war. It lasted for 34 days. It was started on the July 12th in 2006, lasted through August 14th. And if we take a look, so I've identified here the, the beginning day of the war. Now, here, if we were just looking at this chart, forgetting about what may have happened or didn't happen, we would have said at this stage here that uh, that price was bullish. And it was bullish because in this case here, where that first blue arrow is, price was trading above its oscillator and change line, which is green. That means that we had a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions, period. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we had was price trading above and closed above the top of its daily profile. So both of those two things are bullish conditions. So war, no war, the market was bullish at that stage. In fact, it was bullish for the next couple of days. And then two days later, really, the following day, it triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. What that signal tells us, Jacob, is that the market is stretched. 
Now, it's not that that uh, stretch can't continue on or that it can't disappear because it can. So just the mere fact that something is stretched doesn't mean it's a top or a bottom. The way that we make that determination is we let the market communicate that to us. And the way the market speaks to us is it generates these bullish or bearish reversal candles. There's a bunch of them that are out there. What I teach subscribers are the seven bullish and seven bearish candlesticks. They're the only ones you really need to know. They simplify things. And one of those would be a bearish shooting star candle. And that's what identified the top here in Lights Recruit. So even though we had a war that was going on, it was only day number three where we got that sell signal out there. This still shows that was the top. Regardless of the fact that the war continued on for another 30 days or so, I've got the identification out here of when that on August 14th, what crude oil was doing. Now, it formed a bullish hammer candle there. That was the opposite of this bearish shooting star. So there's an expression out there that if you close below the low of a hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong. But that wasn't, if we take a look at, remember when we, when, we, when we started this, we took a look at this green oscillator and change line, how price was above it. Here, when we get to the uh, end of the war, we can see that price is now below a red oscillator and change line, mm. which continued to act as resistance. So it's another tool that I share with folks. It's really helpful. So in summary, crude oil uh, paid attention to the, its patterns. And so, do, so too did the S&P and, uh, and gold. So it's really important to know that because now this is going to help us navigate what's going to happen going forward. So if we take a look at 2021, this is kind of interesting because this was quite a wild market. But in, in 2020, it was a wild market when uh, uh, crude futures got below zero out there. But what happened in 2021 is crude oil confirmed a yearly by the D point pattern. Now, I show the A to B and the C to D legs out there. The way that I get a confirmation of a buy the D point pattern, a Gartley buy pattern, whichever one we want to refer to it as, is it confirms with a bullish reversal candle. In this case here, it was the bullish engulfing candle. Now, if we take a look at and go back a little bit further, and we're still looking at an annual chart here for Lightspeed Crude, these two black rectangle areas show consecutive closes, either higher, in this case here, we're looking at higher closes, where the close of one year is above the close of a prior year out there. And we can see that uh, this we, that we've got two instances. This takes us back to 1984, where we had two four-bar rallies. Each year was a close above the prior year. Well, if we take a look at 2023, we're already trading above last year's close. We're likely to form bar number three this year of consecutive moves higher out there. So now you probably know what I'm going to say next. And what I'm going to say next is we're likely going to see a rally inside of Lights Recruit that takes us into 2024. Now, I'm not giving any price projections here, but we've had two other four-year rallies out there. And so it looks like, to me, we're going to have a fourth year. So I, uh, I filled up my car on Saturday morning. It was $5.09 a gallon. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in the area that I live in. So it's much cheaper where you're at, but here yeah. they, you know, they see you coming and up goes the price. Sure. So, um, so we got to, if I take a look, this is a quarterly chart for crude oil. And here I also show the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the real cool thing about this crude oil chart is that when I eliminate pretty much everything, we can see a clear consolidation. And that's really helpful to us because if we're anticipating that crude oil is going to be moving higher for the next uh, the next year or so, where is crude oil headed to? Well, the first upside target in any kind of consolidation pattern would either be the would be the top of the consolidation, just like the bottom of the consolidation would be another target. So in this case here, this suggests to you and I that we should see $130 per barrel uh, oil sometime between now and 2024. Maybe it's sooner than later, but that is where price is likely headed to because of this consolidation pattern out here. Now, when consolidation patterns get broken, whether it's to the upside or the downside, you have a measured move, and that's equal to the original consolidation. So if we ever do break above that 130-ish area, 228 is the, is the next objective. I am not making that as the call, but it is a pattern that we'd want to pay attention to. If I look at a weekly chart here, Jacob, we can see that 94.34 was a prior swing point. That was a Rhodes Mintum indicator top was confirmed with this bearish engulfing candle. That is significant resistance. We already tested it four weeks ago, three weeks, four weeks ago, tested and rejected it, but prices pulled back and is still holding that green oscillator and change line. Conditions here on a weekly basis are bullish uh, with a price consolidating with inside its profile. And if we see a close of 87.95, we should get up to that 93.26 level. That gets us back towards 94.34. This is the initial A to B equals CD price target that I've got for lights we crude, and we can see here that this is a this retracement, this B to C retracement, only 43 percent. 
that tells us this is likely going to do more than a one-to-one -one move. Well, more than one-to-one -one gets us up to $120. So in summary, we're anticipating that crude oil is going to trade towards the $130 area by next year. And that's going to cost me both an arm yes. and a leg. <laughs> Fantastic analysis. You know, it is always so amazing to see these kind of like long-term patterns develop over the past years. You know, I, I, especially with everything going on, the instability that we're seeing still in Ukraine and Russia, what we're seeing going on in Israel and Palestine. I mean, I, I think it's just amazing what you put together. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing that with us, hey, Steve. You bet, Jacob. You're doing a great job and uh, uh, always enjoy being with you. So have a, a magnificent Monday and uh, bring out your park. It's going to be cold. We'll get it right there, Steve. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. You all right. Take care. You take care now, guys. Uh, folks, uh, we will be right back. <laughs> Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. Um, taking a look at Ford today. They're up a little bit. Um, we've had some interesting moves going on with the stock uh, obviously the yearly high right at 1542 trading about 1196 right now right under that 12 dollar mark uh, they're having some issues um, with some of the strikes that are going on uaw uh, last friday said that they weren't going to add any more factories to the strikes um but more plants could come at any time the uh 
they're, they're essentially doing quite a number on Ford. I think the Ford CEO came out earlier today saying that this kind of needs to end or there's a lot of things that could go wrong for the company and people might not even have jobs afterwards. Uh, until this week, the union had been announcing additional factories on Fridays, uh, but that changed last Friday. They told workers in a live video appearance that the companies uh, started gaming the system, waiting until Fridays to make progress in bargaining. Um, the UAW president said we'll be calling out plans when we need to, where we need to, with little notice. Uh, we're not sticking to one pattern or one system of giving these companies an extra hour or an extra day. They know what needs to happen and they know how to get it done. Um, criticized Ford, saying uh, that said Thursday that it reached its limit of how much money it would be willing to spend to settle the strike. And there was, again, kind of a further reinforcement of that position by the CEO earlier today. Uh, they also had some other issues with their explorers, where over 238,000 explorers uh, had to be recalled to replace axle bolts that can fail um, after the U.S. government had opened investigations. It's a misplaced modifier in the headline, but still. Ford is recalling more than 238,000 explorers in the U.S. because a rear axle bolt can fail, and that potentially causes the loss of driving power or allowing the SUVs to roll away while in the park, or excuse me, in park. Now, the recall comes after U.S. safety regulators opened an investigation into the problem after getting two complaints that repairs didn't work in two previous recalls this year and in 2022. And listen, I'm definitely, on this part, what I'm about to say, I am speaking on a position of ignorance, but it was, you know, again, I bring up the story, like I was helping uh, someone that I knew get a, get a car, right? And they wanted a 2016, 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And they don't like these cars and everyone has bad things to say about them. And then fast forward a few months, the car turns out that it, it catches on fire after about 130,000 miles, or at least it you know, that, that problem exists in them. And I'm kind of like, well, you know, what goes on? Like, what it changes so vastly in these automobiles uh, that, that causes such critical failure? And the same kind of thing with these. Um, I mean, a rear axle bolt, I feel like, is a pretty standard thing. And again, if anyone kind of maybe can give some insight on what that is, I, I don't want to think it's just like they're trying to save money on maybe like cheaper parts. Um, but uh, I, just, I just can't understand why this happens the way that it does. Um, so anyways, we don't see much of a decrease today in the price of Ford, and obviously 238,000 is not a uh, significant amount. I mean, it is a large amount, but regarding Ford's kind of um, ownership in that market, um, I think they'll be okay with it. So we'll move on. This is some good news. I say good, it's interesting news. Coming out of Wall Street, so hedge funds must tell the SEC which companies they sell short under new rules. Uh, the agency will publish aggregate information, giving investors a window into short selling activity. And uh, I guess my AI that I used to get past the paywall didn't work on this one, but I will get a story. We can talk a little bit more about that um, when I open that on the next break. This is some news coming from Pfizer, and some of these medical companies are doing pretty well. Um, Moderna also is uh, seeing some positivity um, because their COVID-19 drugs are going to keep being purchased for time coming forward. Uh, this one's regarding Pfizer. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration had approved Pfizer's drug to treat adults with an inflammatory bowel disease called ulcerative colitis. Uh, that affects a lot of people and is kind of nasty to have. Uh, the decision was based on data from a late-stage study that showed a reduction in disease symptoms for some patients who took the drug uh, when compared with the placebo. The drug branded as Velspidi uh, and chemically known as Etrazimod, let's say it all together, guys, Etrazimod was the key asset that Pfizer picked up in its $6.7 billion deal uh, for Arena Pharmaceuticals last year. Uh, Velocity belongs to a class of drugs uh, that are used to regulate the body's immune systems, excuse me, the immune response, and is expected to co compete with Bristol Myers Squibb's Symposia, uh, which was approved in 2021. Pfizer said the wholesale acquisition cost of the drug per bottle is about $6,164 for a 30 day supply. It's pretty intense, uh, adding that it is consistent with other ulcerative colitis treatments currently on the market. Uh, the list price of Symposia, which is that uh, competitor drug, is about 8,386. Uh, so that looks good for Pfizer going forward. 
something to keep in mind with it. Get some more news as well. We can take a look at Snap. Um, they are up in a big way. And this is a company that I don't really like. Um, I just, I think they're not great with their money. I think they burn through it a lot. Um, and I think the ways that they, uh, how do I say it? They try to innovate, I guess, and get more people to join um, are just kind of lowbrow. They're very big on this news, right? So when you open up Snapchat, I don't have Snapchat, but um, when you open it up, you get you basically just start scrolling, right? And it's all these different news stories. Um, but it's very much like mid 2000s, like grocery line checkout kind of magazine news stories, you know, stuff about like crazy things about Bigfoot or whatever. And um, they'll obviously have ads put in that. Um, I never liked that. They got a bump a little while ago because they were, um, I guess, driving more traffic because of these stories. But uh, I think that has fallen off quite a bit. Regardless, uh, they did jump today. It's about 12.15 percent. It's pretty significant on it. Um, the company is expected to have more than 475 million daily active users in 2024, uh, which is significantly higher than a lot of people had uh, kind of assumed. Uh, the user number reported uh, by The Verge on Friday, sending an internal memo from the CEO, Even Spiegel, uh, to employees exceeded visible alpha estimate of 447 million. Uh, the higher than expected uh, daily active users comes as a relief for Snapchat parent that has been struggling with tough competition in a weak advertising market. Uh, Snap also expects advertising revenue to grow more than 20% in 2024 as part of its stretch goals, uh, the report said, putting it above Wall Street estimates of 14% growth. Uh, Bernstein analyst Mark Schliske told Reuters that expectations from the stock are incredibly, <laughs> excuse me, for the stock are incredibly low. Uh, but he added even that he has to admit that the stock would likely be material higher, materially higher if they hit this goal. Again, I don't think they have like changed too much. Uh, fundamentally speaking, I, I still think they are kind of weak compared to all the other competitors that do similar things. And we look at it as kind of online platforms. Uh, that draw a lot of their money um, from people who are viewing ads on the platform. So obviously, you know, you have more daily active users. That's going to convert into kind of higher revenue because uh, you can charge more for people to put their ads on it. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think the demographic is weird. I think it's young people uh, that are on it. And I'm talking like young kids that are on it, um, which obviously don't have a lot of money, but you can still market to them in a certain way. Um, and I just don't like the stuff they put on the app, but uh, that's just me. So folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Tom O'Brien! Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Sheep filming for Tom O'Brien. We're talking about uh, Snapchat. Uh, before we went to the break, it's up 12.2% today. Um, still, I think one other thing to know about this company, right? I mean, this is up significantly. Um, I just don't know if people don't know where to put their money or something like that. And I mean, this is not, I mean, it is significant volume if you look at the rest of the year, right? I mean, you obviously have higher days like in April, obviously in July, which are far greater uh, than what we're seeing uh, today in this gap up. But I, I still think long term, this company is like sick. Um, if you think about, you know, obviously companies are kind of going under some austerity, Right, they're not advertising as much. They're being far more selective with where they're advertising. Um, I don't think Snapchat wins that game. I don't think Snapchat wins that game against Twitter. I don't think it wins that game against Facebook uh, or Instagram or any of these. Um, you know, that's kind of just my my point on Snapchat. Um, and I, I think we might see kind of a retracing on this stock uh, in the days to come. Some other companies that have taken kind of a hit recently, uh, Hormel, I mean, this is a brutal stock chart on uh, very high volume as well. Just a massive red bar down as October 12th, this occurred. Um, so that was the worst performing stock. If you take a look at it here. Uh, that was Thursday they make spam, Skippy peanut butter and other foods. Um, they basically released uh, an updated strategic plan and settled new contracts with its union members, and nobody liked that, at least the shareholders didn't, clearly. Um, Hormel told shareholders at its investor day that it's aiming to increase operating income of more than $250 million in 2026. And that includes 5% to 7% growth from its current business. It also expects more than $25 million in additional operating income through the transformation of its Jenny O Turkey store business, and merger and acquisition synergies. In addition, the company said it anticipates saving at least 200 million through cost reduction efforts and normalization of its supply chain after recent logistics disruptions. Uh, the agreement approved by members of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union will give workers, raise, uh, excuse me, workers raises of three to six dollars per hour and other benefits. I mean, that is pretty significant. Uh, shares of Hormel Foods on Thursday dropped nearly 10 percent to their lowest closing level uh, since 20. 18. Um, I do think probably is, you know, the wallets get a little bit tighter on the American public, uh, that some of these products, uh, some of the prices will go to Hormel essentially, right? Like more of these kind of lower cost products. Um, obviously they have some higher quality products as well. I think like Justin's peanut butter is sold by them and that's a uh, more expensive peanut butter brand. Um, but yeah, the shareholders did not like mainly uh, stuff to do with settling that deal with the workers' unions. So, I did find an article. <laughs> Didn't leave you guys in the dark here. Let me try to get this up. So this is the new SEC rule, okay? So they rule to shine a light on short selling is what this headline says. Uh, first proposed in late 2021 and early 2022, uh, the rules will require investors to report their short positions to the agency and companies that lend out shares to report that activity to the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, that is FINRA, 
uh, self-regulatory body that polices brokers, of course. Okay, we obviously know what short selling is. Short interest in the U.S. market totaled $927 billion as of Thursday. Uh, according to the analytics firm S3 Partners, the practice has long been divisive, with critics accusing short sellers of trying to hurt companies and short sellers arguing that they help root out fraud and corporate misconduct. Short selling drew renewed scrutiny from Congress in 2021 when retail investors drove up the price of shares in retailer GameStop, causing heavy losses for hedge funds that had shorted the company. In the wake of the saga, SEC Chair Gary Gensler told lawmakers that he would increase the transparency of the market. He says given the past events, uh, it's important for the SEC and public to know more about short sale activity in the equity markets, especially in times of stress or volatility. Uh, the new rule require institutional investors to report their gross short positions to SEC monthly and certain net short activity uh, for individual dates on which trades settle. So, I mean, th this is the point I don't really get, right? Yeah, so what happened in GameStop is it was like a short squeeze. Um, I forget the name of the, the hedge fund, but they took out a bunch of short positions in GameStop. And, um, you know, everyone drove up the price and it uh, made them go bankrupt. So, I mean, there's a, plenty of other instances where it would have been nice to know if there was like short selling going on. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to prevent something like GameStop from happening uh, necessarily, but um, you know, kind of see what goes on. This is obviously going to affect um, all the large boys out there on uh, Wall Street. Uh, FINRA already publishes short interest reports collected from broker dealers, but the new rule will apply to institutional investment managers too, offering a fuller picture of market-wide short bets. Uh, the new data will also include a daily net activity on each settlement, uh, data not currently available with FINRA or the exchanges. Uh, the hedged funds represented by the Managed Funds Association said on Friday that the rules could expose investor strategies. Uh, investment advisors will face more risk when selling short, which will harm investors, market participants, and market efficiency. In addition to GameStop, uh, the... Sorry, sorry, I got an email. In addition to GameStop, the rise of activist short sellers who publish negative research on companies in the hope of depressing uh, the share price have also drawn regulatory scrutiny. That's obviously kind of hinting at Hindenburg. Um, since at least 2021, the Justice Department and the SEC have also been investigating potential manipulation by short sellers and hedge funds around the publication of negative research reports. Okay, we don't need to read the whole thing, but that is kind of the gist of all of it. And we'll see how that kind of changes, you know, even people like us in the den, how that's going to change maybe some of our approaches uh, to some of these equities and indices, if we can see which large companies are really, you know, shorting them and, and what the volume of that short is. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. Take a look at Boeing. Let me pull it up quickly. Up, down. Uh, woo. So from August 31st, obviously we're at 230, trading all the way down to 184. They had some issues um, with supply, well, that's continuing. Um, Boeing is probing 737 quality issues, which is resulting in shares dropping. Uh, Boeing said it's continuing to investigate quality issues affecting its 737 MAX aircraft after a report on new inspections tied to a recent production flaw sent the shares lower on Friday. Inspections of some MAX uh, 8 models will now include hand-drilled holes on a component that helps maintain aircraft cabin pressure. Right on. The air current reported earlier, uh, a quality probe tied to the production flaw is ongoing, and Boeing said uh, this to everyone in an email. The U.S. plane maker fell the most intraday in seven weeks after the outlet reported on the expanded scope of the work. Uh, Spirit Aerosystems Holding Incorporated, which supplies the faulty assemblies, dropped uh, the most in almost a month. We took a look at them as well uh, when this news came out, uh, which really caused this just descent uh, to 184, which we're at now. And it's, you know, you have some days with some decent volume and everything, this significant gap up. Uh, I don't know, I, you know, testing last day with volume, that's going to take a lot of juice to get back up there. Um, so we'll see kind of what shakes out with Boeing as more of this news comes out. Um, the widening checks and potential rework suggests that it will take longer than expected to correct the issue. Uh, this raises new uncertainties around Boeing's fourth quarter deliveries and financial prospects ahead of its earnings uh, reports last this, uh, excuse me, later this month. And Ryanair Holdings, a major 737 MAX customer, um, said that their uh, outlook has worsened significantly, significantly on this. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Um, I had a question uh, emailed to me about Abercrombie & Fitch. Now, I will say, yeah, I'm younger, but I'm not Abercrombie & Fitch young anymore. Um, this stock has done uh, pretty well uh, over the yearly. Uh, you know, March of 2023 down here, we we're trading about 25 and we we're all the way up at 62 and you have a lot of analysts looking around like a $65 area. Um, so, you know, first things first, they just did really well on their quarterly earnings. Um, the revenue in last quarter uh, was up 16%, operating margin 9.6%. Um, and this was outpacing it pretty significantly. Uh, the year prior, let me get the exact figure for you. Yeah, so, and this would have been from the second quarter of this year, at least, what I'm going to say now. Uh, the company had a net income of about $16.6 .6 in, in the first fiscal, excuse me, that was in the first fiscal quarter, not the second. And that was compared to a net loss of 16.5 in the same period last year. So they've really changed over and... What I've noticed, you know, I don't go to the mall that much, but I, you know, sometimes have to go there for whatever reason. Um, and the stores that are still there have done like a massive rebranding, right? And so they're they're looking a little bit more like, a, you know, essentially like the Euro or like kind of like New York, you know, Manhattan stores, right? You know, very wide, like big open windows. Um, the style is a little bit more modern now than it had been in the past, right? It, it always kind of gave me memories of like the early 2000s and what that fashion was, right? That that's 
that's kind of fallen to the wayside, although some of the Y2K fashion is coming back uh, among younger people. Um, but I think they've just done exceptionally well. The quality of their clothes is not very good, uh, but they, it is sold at a premium. So I, I'll have to do a little bit more digging. I mean, this is just kind of my cursory understanding of everything going on with it. And I can take a little bit of a closer look um, and talk to you about it tomorrow. Um, but, I, but I think they have pretty good margins, uh, comparatively speaking. So anyways, thank you for the question. And uh, folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys enjoyed Steve Rhodes coming on and his insights. I'll be with you tomorrow. Tom will be back um, Monday of next week. So folks, stay tuned. We have Tommy on tomorrow at 9 a.m. And uh, we will see you then.